A Manchester United fan and university dropout, 22-year-old Salman Abedi, whose own family were worried about his behaviour. I think he's been radicalised one way or another. Uh, how he got uh, radicalised is, is, is a mystery. Akram Ramadan is a close family friend who watched the children grow up. Salman, who used to enjoy drinking and smoking with friends, had recently become increasingly fervent. He never skipped uh, Fajr prayer, which is the first thing in the morning prayer, in the mosque always. He always prayed, one of the first guys to pray there. He looked uh, like a religious guy, typical religious guy, stubble beard, long, uh, long jilbab. He greeted us with a salam, and when he left, he went with a salam. Like thousands of other Libyans fleeing Gaddafi's regime, Salman's family settled here in Manchester. His father had worked for Gaddafi's security services, but went back to Libya during the 2011 revolution to fight against the dictator. So Salman's father went back to Libya to fight? Yeah. Everybody has went back to fight to uh, get rid of the uh, tyrant. After a few months, Salman joined his father in Libya and was also trained to fight. But could he have been instructed in how to make a bomb like that used in Monday's attack? He could have learned to fight, yes, but to make something as deadly as what he did, it's very hard to tell. In the chaos that followed the revolution, extremist groups battled for control. ISIS gained a foothold in the country. Many fighters travelled to Syria, and today the French authorities suggested Salman was one of them. Today, we only know what we have learned from British investigators. Indeed, someone of British nationality, of Libyan origins, but who had grown up in Great Britain, who all of a sudden took a trip to Libya and then probably in Syria, was radicalised and then decided to commit this attack. Salman Abedi had links with a number of other young men from his neighbourhood who had joined ISIS. His house is still being searched for clues as the authorities investigate his network. They include Rafael Hosti or Abu Kaka, a charismatic ISIS recruiter killed in a drone strike in Syria. Do you think somebody here in Manchester may have influenced Salman? There is unsavoury characters in Manchester, definitely. definitely. Who might be influencing young yeah, boys? Yeah, might be influencing young boys, yes. Promising heaven and virgins and God knows what. I don't think he did this on his own. Somebody must have influenced him, brainwashed him, corrupted his brain. But what did the authorities know about Salman Abedi? Channel 4 News has been told that concerns about his behaviour had been reported to the police by members of his community. Today, his local mosque made this statement. The horrific atrocity that occurred in Manchester on Monday night has shocked us all. Whoa! Armed police raided a number of addresses in Manchester and made several arrests today in their hunt for accomplices. Salman's brother Ishmael is among those being held. But the authorities themselves are facing questions about how much they knew about the bomber before Monday's attack. Well, Salman Abedi's older brother Ishmael is still being questioned by police after being arrested in Cholton just down the road from here yesterday. But his parents and other family members are now living back in Libya. Today, his younger brother, Hashem, was arrested in Tripoli on suspicion of having links with the Islamic State group. And his father has also now been detained. Our international editor, Lindsay Hilson, reports now on the Libyan connection. How happy Libyans in Tripoli were when Muammar Gaddafi fell in 2011. Gaddafi, no! no. Libya, freedom! freedom. How quickly joy turned to chaos. Revolution ushered in not democracy, but anarchy. And Islamists took full advantage. In 2015, thousands of Libyans swore allegiance to the Islamic State, and jihadists took territory in the centre of the country. The father of the Manchester bomber is Ramadan Abedi. His picture, verified by those who know him, is on a Facebook page under the name Yusuf Hana. It features a photo of Anas al-Libi, an al-Qaeda operative who died in US custody, a symbol for a Libyan Islamist political party, and a picture of his youngest son, Hashem, who was arrested in Tripoli last night. The Libyan Interior Ministry, itself run by Islamists, 
issued this picture of Hashem, saying he was connected to Islamic State and knew details of his brother Salman's terror attack in Manchester. Ramadan Abedi, who works for government security in Tripoli, said today that his son Salman was innocent of the Manchester bombing. He was then himself detained. Colonel Gaddafi imprisoned thousands of jihadis in the 1990s. Mr. Abedi was then reportedly linked to the Libyan Islamic Fighting Group, an al-Qaeda subsidiary that failed to overthrow the Libyan dictator. Since 2014, Libya has been split between eastern forces around Benghazi, led by the Gaddafi-era General Khalifa Hefta, and in the capital Tripoli, a national government now backed by the United Nations and including militia from Misrata. It's a far cry from the democratic Libya David Cameron and the then French President Nicolas Sarkozy celebrated after British fighter bombers helped remove Gaddafi. Colonel Gaddafi said he would hunt you down like rats, but you showed the courage of lions and we salute your courage. Last year, Islamic State militants were driven out of their Libyan stronghold, CERT, with the help of Western Special Forces. That was a relief for many Libyans. But the danger is that Libyan jihadis with British connections might bring their fight back here. Salman Abedi is believed to have visited Libya and possibly Syria in recent months, but how much was known about him by the security services? It was suggested that he'd been a peripheral figure in their monitoring of terrorist suspects. And if he was missed, what of others in the suspected network? Our senior home affairs correspondent Simon Israel reports now on what may lie behind putting troops on the streets. These are the first in Downing Street. They are part of nearly a thousand to be deployed across the country. They're there to guard public institutions and public spaces. They are under police, not military orders. They are there because the threat is now considered imminent and police firearms officers are desperately needed on counter-terrorism duties. The raising of the threat level, the increase in security, the bringing in of troops may not be about what you do know, but fear about what you don't know. The Manchester bomber had a sophisticated device. It's very likely he was helped by others Yet he was not a priority for the intelligence services. And so the question is, how many others may be out there who are also unknown? The fact Salman Abidi slipped through the intelligence net has alarmed everybody. There is still too much that we don't know about whether this terrorist was acting alone, whether he had accomplices, and. Uh, whether he was part of a wider network and whether there are others who had access to the same kind of explosives. The most senior officers are well aware the military addition is also giving police more resources to recover lost ground. The Met's new commissioner, Cressida Dick, alongside Major General Ben Bathurst, toured Westminster, which is still not fully recovered from the murder of PC Keith Palmer. We're working as hard as we can together with the intelligence agencies and uh, other parts of the government uh, to try to reduce uh, the threat as best we possibly can and to have a full understanding of uh, whether there was a network working with the attacker on Monday uh, and, and if so, uh, reducing any threat that they may pose. And as she was speaking, there was news of more arrests. This one in Wigan, but not just here, in Libya too. If a possible network is being dismantled, the threat level may only remain at critical for a few days. But questions on how much attention MI5 paid to the Manchester bomber and his trips abroad will have to wait.